you for joining us today for another episode of What's Your Why Wednesday. Today, I am joined by the fabulous Arthur Bryson. He is a loan originator at U Mortgage. Arthur, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, Arthur, most of us in the mortgage industry came into our wonderful industry by accident, but we stayed in the industry because it's tied to our personal and professional why. So at this time, we would love to hear, what is your why? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Lori. It's, uh, it's definitely an honor. Um, and just like you said, some of us kind of fell into this and, and I am no different. Um, you know, when I left active duty years ago and uh, it was very difficult finding, you know, employment that was close to what I did in the military, but, um, the last place that I went, you know, I knocked on that door and I said, listen, I'm not leaving uh, until I get a job. And it was with a mortgage broker. Um, so, and I've been in the industry ever since. So it's been like 20, 25 years. Uh, um, and yeah, I love it. I love that. Definitely. The so I have to ask, I have to ask, you knocked on the door and you said you're not leaving until, until you get that position. What was it about the mortgage industry that you decided like that was the one that you're going to fight to get into? Well, I, I tell you, it was on a list of uh, people who were hiring. And, uh, you know, I said it was a pro I didn't know anything about mortgages, but I said, you know, I can learn fast. So I, again, I knocked on the door. I said, listen, I know you all have this posting. I don't know anything about mortgages, but I'm, I'm a fast learner. Um, and I said, you know, and I'm not leaving till I, till you give me something. You know, I don't care if it's just answering, you know, picking up phones and answering calls. And, you know, they were kind enough to, I guess, respect my tenacity. And, and you know, I didn't become, I say, a processor at that time. I became a loan officer. So they taught me everything that they knew about it. And, yeah, that was, uh, that definitely opened my eyes to a whole world of, of finances that I did not know. Absolutely. Well, I will tell you for any of the leaders out there. I can tell you there's been a few people in my career that have done that to me, you know, that just kept coming back. I promise you hiring anyone with that type of resilience and tenacity, you always win. So for anyone listening out there that someone does that to them, or if you're currently looking to come into the mortgage industry or get that next position, never be afraid to ask for what you want. Never be afraid to Absolutely. speak up for yourself, to use your voice and really be there because I can tell you for any, any great leaders out there, we want you. We want you on our teams. So I love hearing that story, Arthur. That's fabulous. Okay, so here we are. You made it into our industry. You've had a long, successful career. Now you're a veteran of our industry. And you know what? During these times, there's so many special families that we're able to assist and so many of those stories that stay in our hearts. And this is my most favorite question in hearing people's stories. I'd love to hear, Arthur, give us one of those stories that it doesn't matter what year it happened. I want to hear one that really hit you in the heart that you will always remember where you felt the monumental difference you make in this world? See, <laughs> you're kind of going below the belt here because <laughs> you're going right at the heart. Um, I know, right there. <laughs> this one happened earlier uh, earlier in my career because when I started out, of course, I was, um, you know, that's when we had the white pages. So oh, I would yeah. call the white pages, that was my, my lead sheet. Um, and, you know, for another time, I can tell you some stories there. But, um, I did a loan for my dad and afterwards, like through the process, you know, I walked him through the process, the 1003, at the time you had to handwrite everything <laughs> um, and walk him through the process and we closed. And then afterwards, he just told me, he said, son, this is what you're able to do. I've never even heard about it. I never even knew. They were so used to just going to different banks and being turned down or whatnot for whatever reason he couldn't understand. And I made it seem so seamless. And uh, he said, son, this, this, is, this is your way. This is what you need to be doing. More people need to know 
know this and so more and more people in the community need to know that this is available to them so just learn everything you can become a student of this and uh like that was the that was really the defining moment um when my father told me that and um so i would say that i'm, I'm still here because he would want me to be here you know he would want me to continue to push forward and do everything i can to keep um, um you know to share the knowledge that I have and, and to you know lay the groundwork for the next generation coming behind me. Number one, I your your father, I'm sure, is just so proud of everything that you have accomplished and how many families that you positively affected. So that's first and foremost. And you know, Arthur, sometimes, especially when we're in an industry for a long time, sometimes we forget how much of an impact and how I have a saying that we didn't find the mortgage industry. The mortgage industry found us. Yeah. Because I think it takes a special person to not get in it for a year or six months or when the rates are really low or when everything is going great. For the people that have been in it for a whole career, for the people that have seen all the different cycles and ins and outs or started with the white pages. And I, I started in telemarketing too. So yeah, I, I can relate <laughs> to it. I was on an yeah. automated dialer, but I'm with you. I got it. Um, for us that have gone through all that, sometimes over time, you forget how much of an impact. And we all need to remind ourselves that we just like, I, sometimes I equate it to the medical field. You know, if we had a family, a loved one that was sick, we, of course, want them to have the best care. We want to take them to the best doctors and hospitals and specialists. That's the same thing in our industry. What we do in our knowledge and our compassion and our service to our communities, that is just as important because financial importance and freedom is just as valuable as health. I mean, if you think about it, what are the biggest fights over? What is the biggest stress over? It's usually your finances and your health, right? Those are like the right. two things that weigh down on people's shoulders. Well, we are right there to make a difference in that financial freedom and security for generations to come. So your father, a very wise man that recognized that, yes, for us in the industry, it's not just, you know, a rate or it's not just taking someone through the loan process. It's generational wealth and changes that last for generations to come behind us. I love that. OK. All right. Arthur, you are fabulous. We appreciate everything that you've shared. Let's leave with a couple of things of. All right. What would be your advice? Two leaders out there in the industry or someone new coming into this industry, share your insights and your expertise of, of your knowledge of this industry. What would you like to share of kind of the tips of how to be successful, what you should always remember, and if you're a leader, how to make a difference with the teams that you serve? Well, the first thing with anyone new coming into this business, the first thing is to be humble, okay? Uh, you can be hungry, but be humble because you may have read some things, but you don't really know anything. And the only way you learn in this business, let's say, uh, no matter if you're on the sales or operations, is through experience. There's no, no book is gonna teach you, you know, you have to be humble, ask questions, um, and don't be afraid to be wrong. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. And um, for the leaders, um, I would say still be humble and understand where you started because there are hungry people in this. And I mean, the, the, there's a lot of turnover that we have, but there are some who are coming in here who really want to do this as a long-term career. Um, and the only way you're going to be able to find those diamonds is also by being humble and being genuine and being vulnerable. Um, and I believe that's what, what people are looking for. They're not looking for the, the slick sales uh, type leader. Uh, they're looking for that leader who's gonna be beside them, not behind them, pushing them and not in front of them, you know, but right beside them, uh, just like a caring parent, you know, 
we'll do this, we'll do this together. Um, and being open to teach them and mentor. Isn't that, you know, it, it's funny when you said that about a caring parent, right? Like, isn't that the truth? Isn't that what we do with our children, right? We guide, we coach, we mentor, and we nurture them to be able to be successful on their own. It kind of is exactly the same with our teams and with our partners that we work with, right? Absolutely. And so if we just look at it that way and that vulnerable, we, we are all just trying to figure it out. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody's perfect. You know, none of us are always going to get it right. But if we are vulnerable and realize, and that's why I love hearing, like when you tell the story about you starting out with the white pages, right? I love hearing that because everybody always looks at things now and people don't realize, heck, we we were just trying to figure it out. We, right. we were trying to, <laughs> trying to survive. We were trying to survive. We didn't know any better, right? Mm -hmm. But now we can laugh about that. We can, at that time, we weren't laughing. Like we were, no. we were working our tails off, just trying to survive. Um, but now we can share that experience and we can say, you know, hey, this is what we learned from that. So I think that advice is spot on and being humble because we know as fast as things go up, things change and nothing yeah. is forever, you know? So we just have to um, learn every single day and get 1% better, right? Every single day. All right. Well, Arthur, thank you so much for sharing. And I, I also want to mention the way that Arthur and I came together originally is Arthur is going to be opening up a chapter for NAMBA in Arizona. So we are working together on that. And I, I look forward to Arthur opening that up and we will all be supporting him. So thank you for your efforts within your community and continue to shine brightly. Take care, Arthur. Thank you so much, Laura.